Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, June 16, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 10 to 15. And it says, Hear the words of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beast, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of eagles. When he come to appear before me, who had required this at your hand, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain obligations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul ate it. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when he spread forth your hands, I will hid mine eyes from you. Yea, when he make many prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his words. And this must be really bad for God to be lightning Israel here as Sodom and Gomorrah. It means that they have fallen really far. And God here is questioning. So God here have a serious problem with Israel apostasy and their idolatry and their rebellion. So it's clear to me that he's saying that he will not accept any more worship from them because they are vain what they are doing so in other words let, let, let's kind of break it down a little bit he asked the question why are you offering sacrifice to me hmm? why these all of burn offerings why are you offering me these things what's the purpose because you come day after day feast after feast meetings after meetings and you are just going through a ritual with there with no transforming taking place in your lives there's no change in fact you seem to be digging deeper and deeper in sin so these worship experiences that you claim to be having and you claim to be offering sacrifice unto me, I will not accept them. In fact, I consider them abominable. They are abomination to me because what? Your heart is wicked and they are meaningless. And he goes on to say that, yes, you may be acknowledging the different sabbaths and the different feasts so he's speaking here of the different because you know back then they had a lot of feasts and these feasts they were not just random feasts they mean something or they in old testament they are referred to as sabbath a lot of them not the seventh day sabbath but sabbaths so these are the the sabbaths that moses came up with so again i'm not talking about the seventh day sabbath so he's saying that you come time after time but i know that your heart they are not changed and so there's no point to come before me and offer vain sacrifice in fact your hands they are bloody you shed innocent blood. I will not hear your prayers. I'm going to hide my face from you. I'm going to hide my face from you. So, what can we learn from this passage this morning? Because 
this that is happening here that God is calling out Israel on the truth be told we today a lot of us are guilty of the same thing how are we guilty of the same thing well for one every week we come to church and we offer sacrifices so to speak we come we say that we come to worship God but we are only offering vain sacrifice we are just going through a, a ritual because if you examine our lives during the course of the week when it comes to sabbath or even sunday when it comes on to the day of worship that we come before the lord our life during the week it reflects in our worship on sabbath because it's either we don't want to participate we don't want to sing we don't want to do anything because what our life during the course of the week we were not connected to god as we are supposed to be we tell a whole lot, lot of lies we were deceptive we we steal some of us and we do all kind of things that we know is not right and when we come to church we come to offer sacrifice to God corrupted sacrifice mind you because what our hands and our hearts they are not clean and I know you might be saying but isn't the purpose of coming is so that I can receive cleansing for my sin and I will agree with you yes but if there is no real change and if you are not sincere about the things that you and I have done if there is no true repentance and no turning away do you really expect God to accept our sacrifices or our worship let me ask you this if somebody does something to you right let's say somebody steal from you and then the person get caught stealing and they come and they told you that they were sorry for stealing but you observe that the only reason why they are apologizing apologizing is because they get caught not because they are sorry for what they did and so the moment they get the opportunity again they are going to continue to do the very thing that they got caught doing and each time the person does that they come and they say that they are sorry will you believe or accept such an apology knowing that the person have no intention to change there is none of us who will accept the apology because we know that the person don't mean it and until the person means what they are saying there's no point accepting that apology because it's not an apology we are just indulging and encouraging them to continue because every time they come and say that they're sorry we just look the other way and say okay then i forgive you i forgive you no i am not saying now that you must not forgive yes we must forgive and the bible tells us that we must forgive each other but at the same time as i said even though you forgive the person for what they you don't believe that the person mean the apology that they give to you so you understand what i'm saying so forgiveness must also follow by what a transforming of the character a turning away you must be sincere and that's what the bible allude to when it talks about repentance when you repent of something you are sincerely sorry but obviously here israel just did not care they were just going about doing what they want to do and because they know that god will forgive them of their sin they did all that they want to do and then they bring their sacrifices before god their corrupted sacrifices unsincere worship they are just going through with a ritual experience no real connection with god and they expect god to accept that 
Would you put vomit before your friend and expect your friend to eat it? Of course not. So, God is saying to the people here, until you repent, until you change, I will not accept your sacrifice. I will not accept your worship because your heart is full of darkness. Some of us, we go into the sanctuary and we are in malice with the person next to us and we're there in the sanctuary saying that we're offering worship. And you think God is going to accept that worship from you? No! You are there in the sanctuary. You know that you're committing adultery. You know that you steal. You know all the bad things that you are doing with no intention to change. Or you have, it's like you don't care. But yet still, you come and you are offering worship to God and you expect that is good enough. Do you believe that God desire a whole lot of bullocks and lambs and sacrifices? What God needs from us is a transformed heart. That's what he needs is not sacrifices. Because we could offer a million sacrifices and our hearts are still the same. No change. And that's the problem here that Israel had. They were offering corrupt worship. They were basically practicing some of the very things that Saddam and Gomorrah is guilty of. And that is why the reading started out by, by, by allying them or referring to them as Saddam and Gomorrah. Because what? They have become so evil in their doing and it seems like they have no intention to change. One thing I have learned is that God is merciful and kind and God will forgive. But God do not tolerate foolishness. And he doesn't take pian pian from us. So when we are giving to God, we must give to God our best. And we must offer him sincerity. When we are worshipping God, we must pour out our heart before him. Confess our sin and repent. Then, then he will accept our worship. Because he sees our hearts and see that we are really sorry for the mistakes that we have made and we really desire to change. God can work with that. God can work with somebody who have no intention to change. And so this morning I encourage somebody, I am asking you, if you know that you are struggling with a matter or you are doing something that you should not be doing, then I advise you to turn it over to God. Don't let God refuse your worship because when God turns his back on you, you are done for because God is your only hope. God is my only hope. And that is why the, the, the scripture says that we must not grieve the Holy Spirit because when you turn away the Holy Spirit, you have nobody, nobody. And so let us not offer vain worship to God, but let us come before God in reverence and offer true worship give God what he asks for pour out your hearts before him ask him to cleanse you and he will cleanse us that's his promise to us so may God continue to bless and keep us as we seek to walk after his righteousness amen